Costa, Georgia. Foxy 97.5 FM. Victorious Living Bible Institute presents Spiritual Warfare Strategies with Bishop Ronald Reed, a certified instructor. This is an eight-week study beginning on Tuesday, October 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Register for free at www.victoriouslbi.org. For more information, you may email admissions at victoriouslbi.org. The president is Dr. Renee Sellers. Victorious Living Bible Institute is an affiliate of Christian Bible Institute and Seminary. Command your morning devotion and prayer live at 5 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday at WHLJ 97.5 FM in Valdosta and Moultrie, Georgia. Also on Facebook Live on Mondays. You can also tune in by going to www.foxy97.com or call in to 678079611, access code 266590. Evangelist Renee Sellers is your host. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Evangelize Muted. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. And we're live this morning on WHLJ on this winning Wednesday morning, continuing our series in Acts Chapter 3. Uh, we're, we're excited to be coming to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. This is another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're going to just hang in Acts chapter 3. Well, we talked the other day about Peter and John encountering the man by the gate called Beautiful. We described the, the size of this gate the other day. I think it was 75 feet high, 65, 60 feet wide, and it was made of brass. And so this man sat by the gate called Beautiful. He was laid at the gate. He was laid, brought every day to beg to ask for alms. But Peter came along, Peter who had denied Jesus three times. Now that same Peter has been empowered by the Holy Spirit. This Peter uh, came along, and the disciples were doing miracles uh, when, they, when Jesus he was sending them out. They were working miracles. Demons were, were, were being, people were being delivered from demons uh, as they walked with Jesus. Now Peter, this same Peter, has encountered this man, and he is, uh, has activated his limbs <laughs> through this miracle. Uh, he was anointed to work a miracle in this man's life. God was the source. Peter was the instrument. Write that down. The Holy Spirit was the source. Peter was the instrument that God used to bring this man out of a crippling situation. I, I need to say that again. The Holy Spirit was the source. Peter was the instrument that God used to bring this man out of a crippling uh, situation. Can I look, get you to look at your neighbor this morning and say miracles still happen and God wants to use you to help bring other people out of crippling situations. I need somebody to write that down. Miracles still happen and God wants to use you to help bring others out of crippling uh, situations. So we're going to talk about uh, miracles today. This morning we're going to talk about how God still moves in the lives of people to bring healing. While uh, doctors, he partnered with God and, 
other means God uses. He, even medication can be used. Uh, uh, changing your diet is helpful. We serve a God that still works miracles. He uses people today in the area of healing. There's a gift of the Holy Spirit called healing that we're going to talk about this morning. And since it is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I ask someone who has been healed by the power of God to share their testimony today. I want somebody to be encouraged that God still works miracles. There is nothing that is too hard for God. God is still in the miracle working business. There is nothing that is too hard for God. As a matter of fact, I might have two people this morning that have been healed by God's power. But before we begin, I'm going to ask Pastor Gloria Moore Wright to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we bless you today. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings that you daily load us with. Thank you for a new mercy every day. Thank you that your grace is sufficient. Thank you, God, that your compassions fail not. Most of all, we thank you, Lord God, for loving us so much that you sacrificed your only begotten son to die on the cross, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you, God. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you, God, for salvation today. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God, for it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for Upper Room Ministries. Thank you for command your morning. We present this broadcast to you today, God, asking that you have thine own way. Father, in Jesus' name. Bless your servant, Lord God, that's going to feed us from one eye on today. Use her mightily, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless all the ministries that are represented on this call. Uh, I thank you, God, for the House of God churches everywhere they're established and the entire body of Christ. Make us one, Father, even as you and your son Jesus is one. Unite and uh Unite us right now, Father. Make us one in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for WHOJ, Mr. Lee and his staff. I pray blessings upon them now, Father, in Jesus' name. We give you glory, God. We give you praise, and we give you thanks for this awesome, awesome ministry. And we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless it, continue to bless everything that these pastors put their hand to, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And glory be to God. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, um, Eve. Uh, Pastor Gloria Moore Wright. Somebody say miracles still happen. Miracles still happen is my subject today. Miracles still happen. I want to encourage um, people today uh, that, yes, uh, God can use uh your doctor. He can use medication to help bring healing to situations. He, uh, You can change your diet, and your diet can uh, bring healing to your body, change and exercise and things you can do. But what about those things that can't be explained? What about those things that can't be explained, such as a man in his 40s walking for the first time in his life? Those things that can't be explained, this man in his 40s walking for the first time in his life. How do you explain uh, 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 when the doctors tell you that uh, there was cancer, but I don't see any signs of cancer uh, anymore? I, 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 I know that some say miracles have ceased, the gifts of the Spirit have some of the uh, healing has ceased and prophecy has ceased, but I want to encourage you from personal experience that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still works miracles. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, we talked about this the other day, but we're going to read just Acts 6 through 10, chapter 3. 
Then Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. The same temple where many people were sitting that had walked by this man every day, giving him charity. That had walked by this man, the neighborhood, the brothers and sisters, every family, everybody knew that this man was brought to the gate every day to ask for alms, to ask for mercy, to ask for donations. And so the people who were, listen, he leaped up, stood, and walked into the very temple where the same people that saw him cripple could see him heal. And I said this on Monday, the same way, the way they saw you last year, they're not going to see you anymore. The way they saw you last week, they're not going to see you anymore. It Listen, because our Father still you uses people to bring healing to other people. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want somebody to be encouraged that he is immutable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so he so he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him <laughs> walking and praising God. This man had been in bondage for 40 years, and now this man is free. And the number 40 is very significant. Write this down if you're taking notes. 40 is the number for trials and tribulations. 40 is the number that represents trials and tribulations. But I want to encourage somebody this morning that no matter how long you've been in this, look at your neighbor and say, you coming out. No matter how long you've been going through this, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out this morning. No matter how long you've been dealing with this sickness and disease, whether uh, physically or, or, or mentally, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. As a matter of fact, I, I, listen, ladies and gentlemen, look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out of this, and I am going to give God praise. Can I get some? Somebody to write this down. Your praise is your testimony. Somebody give God glory this morning. Your praise is your testimony. How do you know when somebody is really free? How do you know when somebody is really delivered? How do you know when God has worked a miracle in somebody's life and nobody else can explain it? Look at your neighbor and say, they will always have a testimony. Don't tell me you're free and you don't have a testimony to tell. <laughs> thank you, Lady Anderson, for your yes this morning. <laughs> God, I thank you. Thank you for your yes this morning. Don't tell me you're free and you don't have a testimony to tell. Somebody say, I got a testimony. And so it says in verse number nine, <laughs> and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. All my life I had to beg, but now I don't have to beg anymore. Can somebody give God praise? All my life, come on, come on, color purple, all my life I had to fight, but I want to encourage somebody, you don't have to fight anymore. All my life I had to beg, and I wasn't too proud to beg. Now I'm not too proud to praise. Can somebody give him glory? He wasn't too proud to beg, and now he's not too proud to, to, to praise. This man, the people were in wonder and amazement at what had happened to this man. While this man who had been cured, this man who had been cured immediately and completely. Sometimes healing can be progressive, ladies and gentlemen, but God can still do it. There's nothing too hard for God. Come on, the same power that healed this man is the same power that can heal you. So that, that sometimes healing is progressive, sometimes it is immediate. And, and I and I talk uh, that there are moments that. People have a desire to go home. This man was healed immediately and completely. In other words, 
there was no residue. Lady Anderson, if you don't shout on this in your den or wherever you at your house this morning, maybe out there behind the house by the pool, but this man, there was no residue of his crippling situation. There was no residue that he had been crippled for 40 years. There was no residue, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that when God works a miracle in your life, there will be no residue of what you went through. Can somebody say, I don't look like what I've been through. And so thereby he did not look like what he'd been through. But before we talk, listen, go any deeper into Acts chapter 3, let's talk miracles this morning. Let's talk a little bit about miracles. C.W. Lincoln defines miracles as this. He says something that a person could observe with his natural senses and notice that the people were in amazement. They were in awe because they were able to observe this. The man was able to observe this. And because the man not only experienced what he observed, that's why he gave God a praise. This man was excited about this new life that he was getting ready to experience. He was excited that his body had been healed. His knees and ankle bones had straightened up by the power of God. Peter didn't say, in the name of Peter, rise up. He said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up. Can somebody say there is still power in the name of Jesus? Listen, a miracle is something that a person could observe with his natural senses. Mr. Lincoln says that he could see with his eyes and understand with his mind what had occurred. It was something that was accomplished by divine power without any adequate explanation or human cause. I know people say that pro- some people say that prophecies have ceased, you know, that, but, but I've experienced it. When my daughter was missing for two weeks, I didn't know where my daughter was for two weeks. My daughter was taken straight out of school, and I did not know where my baby Baby was for three weeks, for two weeks rather, so I can empathize with a parent who has a missing child. I thank God that I got my baby back in two weeks, but I know the feeling and the agony and the hurt and the pain and the piercing of the heart when you think you're getting your baby back and then you you, then you roll up and they're not there, she's not there. I know the piercing of the heart when you get a phone call from your child who lives in Georgia and says, Mama, I'm moving to Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, I can empathize with a mother who has had a child who is missing. But the miracle in this is I was called to my aunt's church. I was not saved. I was not praying. I was not calling on Jesus, but somebody say somebody else was praying for me. Somebody else was praying for my baby. God revealed, the Holy Spirit revealed to my Aunt Dot not only what I was going through, not only what God was going to do in that situation, he also revealed what my baby girl was experiencing during this moment. He revealed, and my apostle always says that God does more than just confirm. He reveals. So he revealed the emotions that my baby girl, Jasmine, was going through while her sister, Felicia, was missing. And she did not see it with her eyes, but the Holy Spirit revealed to her. I was witnessing what Jasmine was going through, but the Holy Spirit revealed to my Aunt Dot. By the Spirit, he revealed to her, my daughter Jasmine, she was getting quieter every day. She was getting more resolved every day. My daughter was was depressed because her best friend was gone. My aunt didn't see it. The Holy Spirit revealed that to her. God, this is a miracle in this, that on Sunday they touched, They said, Aunt Dot says, get to the church. And the problem with a lot of people today is they don't want to respond in obedience to, to instructions like that uh, because it didn't come from the source. Well, the pastor didn't tell me to come, so I ain't got to show up. The pastor didn't tell me to be there, so I don't have to show up. The pastor didn't call me him or herself, so I don't have to show up. One of the contributors 
to me getting my daughter back when I did was obedience. Even though I was not in the church, I obeyed and went to the church. Somebody needs to understand that there are moments that God will move when you obey. One of the things I said yesterday, there are two reasons that people go through trials. There are two 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 aspects of suffering. Jonah suffered, went through because of his disobedience. Paul went through because of his faith and his commitment to doing the work of the kingdom. And I said yesterday, you have to decide which side of the coin that you're on. And so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, my obedience in going, even though the pastor didn't directly ask for me, I went out of obedience. Listen, what else was I going to do? My baby was missing. Who else was I going to turn to? My baby was missing. And my Aunt Dot spoke prophetically. For those who believe prophecies have ceased, I've witnessed it and still witness it. In three days, they're going to feel bad and let her go. In three days, I got a phone call. To come pick her up. (laughs) In three days, I got a phone call to come get my baby. Listen, listen, one of the things that God wants to do through through the prophetic is bring encouragement and hope to people, including unbelievers. I, I was a sinner. But God used that as an opportunity to show me who he was and what he was able to do. In this man's life, this was an opportunity for not only this man, but the people to show who Jesus was and what he is able to do. Mr. Lincoln says that miracle was something that transcended God's laws of nature It was something that went beyond what is normally observed in God's working throughout the laws of nature. It was something that humans or the laws of nature could not reproduce, something that transcended those laws. So imagine being in your 40s, never walked in your entire life, and everybody in the community knew about your situation. Everybody was familiar with the fact that you were were an invalid all your life. Everybody knew the man that sat at the gate called Beautiful. And I worked in mental health, and I asked the question one time, has God ever healed anybody who was diagnosed with schizophrenia? And I want to encourage somebody that I'm seeing it (laughs) In in the life of one of my relatives. Everybody knew that the man that sat at the gate called you, everybody knew this man. Everybody saw this man. The people gave to this man. The people who were used to provide and watch this for this man are now looking at this man in amazement. And I want to encourage some brothers and sisters this morning that the people were used to providing for you and giving to you. They knew you had never stood on your own two feet. I want to encourage somebody to just believe. How do we know that this man was in his 40s? Let's go to Acts chapter 4 and verse 22 in the New King James Version, which says, For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. This man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Some commentators say he was Uh, exactly 40, but the scripture says he was over 40 years old. He was at least in his 40s. And so we did a series a couple of years ago on the Gospel of John, uh, and many scholars uh, define the Gospel of John as the book of belief. Before I talk about the miracles that are recorded in the Gospel of John, and when I tell you, if you have not, listen, if you need to be strengthened in your faith, read the Gospel of John. I've been saved and since March of 2003. Some people have been saved for many, many years longer than that. But when, I, when we did that series on the Gospel of John, it increased my own faith. Before I talk about the seven miracles that are recorded, let's, let's take a quick break for station ID. And look at your neighbor said, miracles still happen. 
We're live at 5 this morning on WHLJ, 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. There are seven miracles that are recorded in the Book of Belief, or what we call the Gospel of John. Seven miracles that are recorded, and we studied those in depth just a few years ago. Turning water into wine, first miracle that is recorded in John chapter 2. Healing the nobleman's son in John chapter 4. Healing the man at the pool, John chapter 5. Feeding the 5,000, John chapter 6. Walking on water, John chapter 6. Healing a man born blind, John chapter 9. And then, of course, uh, raising Lazarus, who had died. But John says in John chapter 20, verse 30 through 31, New King James, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the, every uh, book of the Bible has a key verse. Write that down. Every book of the Bible has a key verse. When you do uh, Sunday school lessons, there's a key verse. But every book of the Bible has a key verse. And, and these two verses are the main, the, the, uh, and the key verse is what the writing is centered around. The key verse is what the writing is centered around. These two verses, John 20, 30, 31, is what the Gospel of John is centered around, and this is why it is called the Book of Belief. Notice that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing you may have life in his name. And so as we read the Gospel and, and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, nobody questioned whether or not the Lord worked miracles. Nobody questioned that miracles were being performed while the Pharisees did accuse Jesus of, of casting out devils by the power of Beelzebub. Jesus was, was quick to rebuke their theology, ladies and gentlemen. And he warned them about the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. While the Pharisees spoke from what was in their heart, their eyes could not deny that miracles had taken place. I want to encourage you this morning that when the Lord uses people, to bring deliverance to other people, those who knew them and, and saw their bondage won't be able to deny that it was God who delivered them. And when the people see that you're no longer wounded, that you're, no, that you're no longer crippled, that the cancer has gone and nobody can explain it, that the disease is gone and, 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 and it cannot be explained by human reasoning, they won't be able to deny that Jesus is real and that God is the one who did the, the, deliver them. There will be evidence of a changed life, whether from a physical illness or a mental illness. God still works miracles, ladies and gentlemen. While the Pharisees questioned the source, they they couldn't deny the miracles themselves. Can somebody shout amen? While the Pharisees questioned the source by accusing Jesus falsely of casting out devils by the power of Be Beelzebub, they could not deny the miracles themselves. Since we have already defined a miracle this morning as something that transcends God's law of nature, in other words, something that cannot be explained on the basis of natural law, we are are now looking at the nature of New Testament miracles. These miracles were, were such of such nature that even unbelievers could not deny what they saw. Even unbelievers cannot deny what they saw. In Acts chapter 4, verse 14 through 16, it, it tells us what effect that the healing of this 40-something-year-old man had on the Jewish Sanhedrin Council. This was the uh, governing body among the Jews. This man's healing had a powerful effect. It's almost like they were scratching their heads. 
look at your neighbor, and I need you to write this down because you're going to have to tell somebody this next week. What God is getting ready to do for you is going to have unbelievers scratching their heads. What God is getting ready to do for you is going to have your haters scratching their head. What God is getting ready to do for you is going to have your doubters scratching their head. Somebody ought to shout amen and start scratching your own head because God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. Can somebody say God is amazing? God is a powerful God. God still works miracles, and he uses, and watch this, he works through people. He works through people. He worked through Peter, but Peter didn't use his own name. Oh, God, what did I just say? He worked through Peter, but Peter did not do this on his own ability. He worked through Peter. But Peter was very sure to do what he did in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage somebody this morning, and I've been seeing stuff uh, 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 on YouTube where people are, 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 are claiming to be working miracles, but they want people to look at them. This is one thing apostle and pastor were teaching in, in their Bible study on last night. They were re- talking relative to our lifestyle. But even when, and and this is a part of the lifestyle of those in ministry, that people, when God uses us, we don't want people to look at us. When God uses us, we shouldn't want people to give us credit. When God uses us, and I I shared this before, all, all I did was preach. The man of God came to the church. He left the pills out. He said he was going to go home and take the pills and die. But he came to church. The message was preached. He went home and chose, in that moment, he chose to live. That's a miracle in itself. He chose to live. The word was preached. And he shared just a few weeks ago with my dad, your daughter saved my life. But I told my dad, it wasn't me. That was God. It was the Lord that did that through the message that was preached. Listen, always be sure that God gets the credit whether you're testifying about what he did for you or if you're testifying about what he did through you. Make sure that you give God the credit. Peter didn't do it in his own name, but he was used as an instrument to bring healing to this man. So the the Jewish Sanhedrin Council, (laughs) this religious governing body among the Jews, couldn't doubt it, even though there was a little puzzle. They really did not want people to look at Jesus. Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. They brought Peter and John before them, and it says in the New King James Version, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Ooh. (laughs) Dr. Harris, come get me. They can say nothing against it. Come on, somebody. Lady Anderson, I can't wait for you to come on. They can, they, they can, they could, in other words, they could not doubt that this man had been healed. They could not doubt that a miracle had taken place. In other words, they couldn't put their mouth on it, ladies and gentlemen. They couldn't put their mouth on it. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, this man who had been crippled until he was in his 40s, ladies and gentlemen, now they can't say anything. I, listen, we can't say nothing about this. We see it with our own eyes. We're seeing this with with our own eyes. We, I, we can't say anything against it. Listen, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident. Apostle has been talking for several days about the evidence. There was evidence that they could not deny. Come on, somebody. There was 
evidence that they could not deny. And can I, if you know God healed you and you might be in the bathroom or in the bedroom this morning, if you're with somebody, I need you to tell them God did this and there is evidence they can't deny because they said I wouldn't live past 60, but I'm still here. They said I wouldn't live past 45, but I'm still here. I want to encourage somebody this morning that that's a miracle that cannot be denied. And so, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, I, we, listen, we can't say nothing, but listen, we can't deny this. What are we going to do with the people? For indeed that a notable miracle, an observable, observ, observable miracle, something that, that, that cannot be denied, has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. We, we, we can't deny it. We we can't we can't even we can't even put our mouth on this. This thing's so real. We cannot deny it. They conferred privately without Peter, without John, and without the man that was healed in their presence. In speaking to each other, they wanted to deny it, Lady Whitaker, but they couldn't. There are people that want to deny that God saved you, but they can't because of what God is doing in you. The fruit don't lie. Can somebody shout amen? A lot of people want to deny that God saved you, but they can't deny it because of what God has done for you. And so thereby, they wanted to deny it, but somebody said they couldn't. Why would they rather have denied it? Because of the confirming effect of the deity of Jesus Christ that this miracle had on the people. In other words, the Jewish Sanhedrin council did not want the people to see Jesus in this. They didn't want them to see Jesus in this. Even today, there are some religious beliefs that do not want to see Jesus in this. Somebody said Jesus was all up in this. Nobody did this but God. So, so why would this? They, the, the confirming effect of the deity of Christ that this miracle had on the people. But here is this man in his 40s, born crippled. They knew this man has been crippled. Not only is this man healed, this man is whole. There is no residue. They have been crippled all his life, and his healing did not take place. Watch this now. His healing took place immediately. His healing sprang forth, as the Scripture says, immediately. Immediately, It was immediate, and God used Peter and John to help this man have a new life. Can I encourage you this morning that the Lord will use others to help you walk into, walk into this, this new life? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's a list of spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives as he will. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11, New King James says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. One of the gifts that is noted in 1 Corinthians is the gift of healing. One of the gifts that is noted in 1 Corinthians is the gift of healing. Can somebody say the gift of of healing this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, the gift of healing this morning. If you've experienced God's power to heal physically, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. If you've experienced his power to heal, somebody say, thank you, Jesus, this morning. I want to encourage you this morning that God still works miracles. In 1 Corinthians, there's something called the gift of healing. And that gift had been given to Peter and John. They used that gift to bring this man up and out of his situation. Come on, somebody. God, listen, they used what was in them to bring this man up and out of his situation. A little commentary. The nature of the New Testament miracles was so convincing in its approval of the power of God that even the enemies of Jesus could not deny what they saw. Even the enemies of Jesus could not deny what they saw. It says in Mark 16 and 20, Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them and confirming his word by the signs 
that accompanied it. The key word here or phrase is confirming his word. Underline that. Confirming his word. The Lord promised that there would be gifts from the Spirit. The disciples went out, preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word. Underline confirmed his word this morning. The disciples confirmed or made strong. That word confirm means to make strong or valid. They confirm or made strong or valid their message with the gifts that the Spirit gave them. The Bible also says that the prayer of faith was saved the sick. And when we talk about healing, God heals physically, but another aspect of healing is salvation. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed relative to our salvation. And and not only physical healing, but eternally. And so there's a woman of God, since this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, that is going to talk about the miraculous power, God's power to heal from physical illnesses. She can testify that God still works miracles. Lady Emily Anderson, First Lady of Evergreen Church, Bristol, Georgia, Highway 32, a church alive, that's worth the drive, is going to share her testimony this morning. And I want to encourage some ladies. As a matter of fact, uh, I listened to the testimony the other day of another woman of God who was an intercessor in her church, praying for other people with cancer in her own body. She had cancer in her own body, but today, that woman is healed. God can use, okay. as the doctor said, he can partner with the doctors. But somebody say it is God. God's power is still at work. Lady Emily Anderson, share your testimony, woman of God, and thank you for giving the Lord your yes today. Lady Emily. Praise God. To God be the glory. Um, back in 2017, in my uh, quest to... Um, get rid of acne at age of, uh, I think I was 65 at that time, I went to a dermatologist in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And while I was there, I had a growth that was at the top of my sternum. And that was that spot right there um, below my uh, breast. And in doing that, while I was there, I just said, just kind of flippantly, well, since you, can you get this little knot right here seems to be growing. Can you remove it? And she said, yes, but you will have to, uh, we'll have to give you an appointment. Uh, But while I was there, someone called in and canceled the appointment, and she removed it. And then when I went back for them to do the follow up uh, she removed the stitches and she was just talking and asked had anyone in my family ever been diagnosed with uh with cancer and I just said kind of flippantly because that's the way I, I was back then. Um I said, Yeah my aunt did but but she was seventy three and she was an alcoholic and you know and she didn't tell anyone. But the next day I was at, um, I was in Atlanta, and the next day I was back in Waycross, Georgia, and she called me on the phone, the dermatologist did, and she said, um, Miss Anderson, I don't normally do this on the phone, but she told me, she said, uh, you were, uh, you have cancer. And she said, and I sent it back to the lab. And it came back the same. And uh, I said, what do we do next? Because by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. And um, to, and as 
I went, this was in July 2017. And so when I, um, she recommended me to go to a surgeon that deals only with breast cancer. And um, I did. And after, and they, after they gave me, I went through three surgeries because they were trying to find out where the cancer came from. The first follow-up surgery, they went back into that same spot and they located, uh, they said it was about the size of an eraser and they got all of that out. But they still wanted to know where it came from. So they did additional surgeries. I had one a surgery. They did a um, lumpectomy on my right breast. Then they couldn't find any cancer there. Then they went back and did a surgery where they, it was almost like an anchor where they went down the middle between the two breasts and went underneath and did uh, that surgery. Then they did my lymph nodes, thinking that they were going to find cancer. So um, when you have cancer, uh, it is said that there is an origin for it, but they never could find an origin for it. They went and they had a council with uh, several doctors at Emory. They went and pulled in a doctor from Cleveland, Ohio, trying to figure out where this cancer came from. And they never could. I am five years going on six years after that happened uh, back in 2017. And when I go back for a checkup, their response to me, oh, yeah, you're the one with the unusual presentation. Hallelujah. It was unusual because they could not find where it came from, and they could not find where it came from because Jesus healed. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. So they still, they still cannot find. They still cannot find where it came from, and that's because God healed me. To God be the glory. It is so important for us as people of God, as we sit under the word of God, that we begin to own that word because we don't know what it, what challenges we will have in our lives. And I thank God for the word of God. I thank God that I was taught by Jesus' stripes we were healed. So when the news came, the faith rose up to God be the glory. Today I stand cancer-free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I encourage anyone on today, when you receive the bad news, we need to allow the faith of God to rise up in us. And we say what God says. I thank the doctors uh, uh, for all that they did, but it was God. It was God that did it. We we were there uh, visiting at Emory when I would go back, and when they was trying to locate the origin, they couldn't find it. The the radiologist, she said, Miss Anderson, she says, I am not. After going back and having counsel with the other doctor, she said, I am not going to treat you with radiation. She said, because we can't find where it came from. So the doctors confirmed that they could, the oncologist and the radiologist confirmed that they can could not find the location. And I stand here today saying that they could not find the origin of it 
because God healed. So to God be the glory. God is still a healer. I praise God for, I thank God for the doctors, but God can work with the doctors too. And I I just thank God on this day that by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. To God be the glory. That's my testimony. That's one of my testimonies that uh, God can heal from breast cancer. And they call it breast cancer. Anything that's in your upper portion, they deemed it breast cancer because it's it was near that area. And one thing about it, let me add this, that I was a person that got my mammograms faithfully every year. It never showed up in a mammogram. And all of them said that because of the location of it, it would not have shown up. But to God be the glory. Praise God. That's my testimony. Hallelujah. Just just one of them. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for sharing, Lady Anderson. And I want you to take us out. we got about just a few minutes of, to give us about three or four minutes of your time. But cessation theology would say miracles have ceased. But we choose to believe that God still works miracles. The Holy Spirit worked through Peter and John. They were credible individuals who walked with the Lord. He, the, the Holy Spirit used them to bring healing to a man that had been crippled his whole life. We choose to believe that God still works miracles today. God bless you. God keep you. Lady Anderson, take us in with prayer. Father God, on this glorious day, this day that you have granted unto us, we just thank you, Father, for you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the best that you had, and that was Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus walking in obedience, being submissive to your will. By Jesus' stripes, we were healed. He received those stripes for us, and we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. For in your word, you let us know that healing belongs through the to the children of God. And that comes through our acceptance of your salvation plan. Father, we just glorify you on today. We thank you for loving us so much that you had a plan for us before the foundation of the world. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that miracles still work. Hallelujah. Miracles still work in this earth. Father, we thank you for those who believe, who believe your word, for those of us who will be steadfast and do what you have assigned us to do for the building of your kingdom so that you can get the glory. Father, we just thank you on today. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus for anyone that is faced with a challenge, be it medical challenge or mental challenge, that their eyes will be open and they will accept what you have prepared for us, and that is the salvation through your son, Jesus. And along with that, Hallelujah, comes the many, many promises in the word of God. Father, we just thank you right now for opening eyes up so that people will see what they have in you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Heavenly Father for giving uh, the people in the medical field the wisdom and the knowledge that they have. Father, we realize that all of that still comes from you, and we just glorify you on this day. Father, we ask right now, in the name of Jesus, for you to continue, Heavenly Father, to continue to 
empower the lives of the people so that they will do what you have called us to do in the kingdom of God so that we can snatch souls out of the fire, Father God, so that others can experience your miracle work in power. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Peter. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and John, and all that they did. Father, we thank you, for we have a witness in the scriptures. We have witnesses down here in this current, world where we live, that you are still working miracles. And Father, we just glorify you on today, for you get all of the glory. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you on today. Thank you for the woman of God that brought forth the word of God to us on today. The word that we heard today, to me, it was a faith-increasing word. Heavenly Father, it was a word that confirms that you still work miracles. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you on today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for us being able to have modern-day examples of your miracle working power so people can see what you can do. We just thank you. Thank you on today. Hallelujah. Father, continue to bless the vessels that brought forth the word of God on today. Father, we ask you to replenish. You know exactly what she stands in need of. We thank you for the platform of Command Your Morning. We thank you for Mr. Lee and the radio station. We ask you to continue, Heavenly Father, to bless them with your abundance of favor in their lives. Father, I glorify you on today. Hallelujah. For you still work miracles. And, Father, bless each of us as children of God for us to be steadfast in the word of God, for us to be the ones that will share what you are still doing. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you have no respect to a person, but you do respect our faith. Father God, we ask right now that we will receive the word of God, for in the in the, your word you let us know that faith comes by hearing. Bless each of us to open up our ears, our spiritual ears, to hear the word of God so we can have strong faith, hallelujah, and that we will stand with you no matter what comes up in our lives that we will stand, that we will be steadfast in your word. Hallelujah. Father God, bless each of us to be submissive to what the word has called us to be. We just glorify you on today. And we thank you. We thank you for commanding your morning. We thank you for this platform. In Jesus' name. I say to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, you, Father. Thank you, Lady Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Lee. This miracle got the attention of the audience. It confirmed the credibility of the apostles, and it gave Peter an opportunity to preach Jesus. And there were, in the number in Acts 4 and 4, it says, However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about five. Thousand. God used this as an opportunity to draw more people to Jesus. God bless you, everybody. God keep you, heaven smile upon you. The Bible says in First John chapter five, verses four and five, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. For those who believe, I encourage you to declare, "I win." I am victorious. My father still works miracles. God bless you. God keep you those on the call. Please remain on the line. 
And friends, for the last hour, you have been listening to Command Your Morning Prayer Line live this morning from the Upper Room Ministry, the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor there is none other than Pastor Samuel Sellis III. Don't forget to listen online worldwide at www.foxy97.com. Join us tomorrow morning, same station, same time, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. for Command Your Morning Prayer Line with your host, Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers.